and check this out. Here's the sticker telling me about the uh, oil filter. And we're going to look at that right now. So the parts that came in the mail was this new oil filter. And check it out, the screen is intact. It's much better than this old... Well, this isn't even a filter anymore. I don't even know what you would call it. And I'm not exactly sure what that solder job is. It's all good to go. It came with the O-ring on it. The guy threw that in. He says that uh, normally they don't come with an O-ring, but he always throws one on before he, uh, he mails it off. Yeah, that was totally 72 bucks worth of parts right there. Ouch. But it's good to go. It looks nice. It's going to do its job. It is look like it's manufactured a little bit differently as this, this is a smooth plate and whenever we look at this guy right here it looks like it got, has a little bit of a stamped indent so anyway other than that they look pretty close to identical well the more I talk say that they're identical they this one looks shorter and that one has a thicker thicker ring to it but he says it's gonna work and I really don't care because I'm ready to put some oil in this tractor because I want to start it up. The transmission slash hydraulic filter has been installed. Remember it's on the right hand side of the tractor right there where your stickers at explain to you what all you got to do to it. I got them all tightened up like I said they're 12 millimeter bolts that, uh, that put those things in and now we are going to go ahead and reattach our brakes but I am going to adjust them real quick because the parking brake mechanism is not working on this bad boy. You're supposed to be able to push this down. Hold on, let me get situated here. You're supposed to be able to push this down and then flip this lever back and that's supposed to engage the parking brake. Unfortunately, that is not working on this tractor. So what I believe I need to do is adjust my rod here and I need to do it on the other side as well because while the, the lever is keeping the brake pedal depressed it's not going far enough to uh, actuate the brakes to hold them so I'm going to play with that a little bit and get it all set up and then we're going to put in some oil okay YouTube the brakes have been adjusted and reinstalled and uh, there is no play at all right now the parking brake is engaged as indicated by the little sticker and Granted, I, I know they're engaging now because I really got to push on that pedal down to, uh, to engage that little lever. That little lever right below has three little hash marks, guessing for the different, uh, for, for adjustment, for whenever the brakes start to wear in. Anyway, I was always going on that middle clink and um, the middle one, which is on right now. And it wasn't engaging, like you'd set the parking brake and the tractor would just roll. But now, you really got to push on that pedal to hit that middle link, and I think we're good to go. Alright, now on to the oil. For oil, I'm using the Stone Temple Pilots 303 tractor fluid. It's what the auto parts store had, and after reading the manual, it said used 80-90 weight. But whenever you start reading different parts of the manual it starts saying if you're sharing it with hydraulics then you need to use a high quality mixed fluid and it was told to me by the guys over at Valley Power to go ahead and use this uh, 303 it's called John Deere 303 tractor fluid and that's whenever your transmission and your hydraulics use the same stuff so picked up this pump because there's no way I was going to sit around and uh, pour three gallons into the transmission by holding a bucket so this guy's pretty awesome it was kind of pricey I think it was 50 bucks and the first thing that started happening was it was leaking right out of here so uh, I ended up tightening that guy up but it all worked out it does leak a little bit but you know it's just it's just keeping the seals lubricated it comes with this nice little hose and all I really did was uh, just spun this guy around and in she went and I just kind of went to town with the pump now I wasn't sure how much three gallons was so I got on the interwebs and I figured out that a gallon of oil is about seven pounds so I just kept going and pumping and then occasionally I would weigh it with like ah, I don't know if you'd call this a fish scale because it goes all the way to 50 pounds 
So it might be a big old fish. I just went, I gave this guy credit for a couple pounds and I just went till I had about, I was gonna stop at 14, but by the time I got done, I realized that I'd already gone to like, um, like 12, so I stopped there. So the manual calls for like three gallons and one pint. So I'm definitely at the level. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start up the tractor here in a little bit. I'm gonna run the uh, hydraulics up and down. My three point is all the way down. So all that oil is out of that system. And there is a little bit of oil in the loader system since the uh, I, I left the bucket in the slightly up position. But before that, I know, I know, we are going to work on the fuel system because it was leaking everywhere. This is the, uh, the fuel line going to the fuel filter. And then this is your fuel bowl. And I, I can't even tell what's in there. I don't know when the last time it was changed. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to change some hoses. And we're going to do a filter change. And then, and then we can go. I went ahead and drained it from the tank by just pulling this guy off. So we can get right at it. Okay, so this is what we got right now. We got some old rotted out fuel lines. This one was going from the tank to the filter, and then this one was going from the filter to the injection pump. With the fuel filter, we have an old rotted out bowl that had quite the amount of rust at the bottom, and then a very well used filter. I wanted to kind of point out there's, there's some weird stuff on it. Anyway, we're replacing all that. We're going to replace the fuel hose with some uh, Briggs & Stratton fuel line. I guess if it's good enough for fuel, gasoline, then it should be good enough for, um, you know, diesel. So I had a whole box of that Briggs & Stratton fuel line for whenever I was doing the John Deere's. So we're going to go ahead and throw that in, make some new cuts and make some new hoses. And then I got ahead, gone ahead and set up the new filter and the new bowl. And it does come with a new O-ring. Uh, before I put this O-ring on uh, for, for good, I'm going to go ahead and lube it up with some diesel. That way it's a nice, nice good seal with the uh, ring. The area we're working with, it's a little tight. So here's your pet cock. Uh, and this is where the bowl screws onto. The fuel line from the fuel tank is actually way back there. It's that little little blue thing that's sticking down. You can get to it, but uh, it's it's going to be doable. It, it's tight fit, but and then we route it over here to this guy. And then from there, we route it. And that's just a straight shot to our injection pump right there. So I'm going to get this stuff all put on, and then we're probably going to have to prime, reprime the injection pump Problem means we're going to have to maybe have to crack some injector lines right here, let the air out. We'll just see. We'll crank her up. Maybe with it being a little motor, it won't be too bad. I may try the trick of putting compressed air into the tank to help uh, push the fluid through the system, but I'm not sure if it's going to get there all the way. All right, so you can see the nice shiny black line down there. We got new fuel line from the injunction pump to the fuel filter and then from the fuel filter on up there you can just see the hose clamp right there poking out to the fuel tank so what I went ahead and did because that new plastic fuel bowl it's doesn't the fuel filter doesn't fit in there very well so I went ahead and just kinda popped it in right now and then I'll put the fuel bowl around it uh, after I screw it on. But all it is is there is an O-ring kind of up in that guy. I don't know how well you can see, but I, I went ahead and lubed that. We're just gonna slide this guy in. There we go, nice and secure. So we're gonna go ahead and put the fuel bowl on now. I'm gonna uh, put the gas back, I mean the uh, uh, diesel, it's diesel in the fuel tank and uh, we'll see if this thing cranks up. Okay, here's what I did. I filled up the uh, fuel tank with the fuel that I had drained from it 
And then I checked the float bowl, and as you can see, it's definitely got the color of diesel floating around in it. But it wasn't, it did not fill up until after I had to go ahead and take the fuel line off here behind the mesh, go into the injection pump. As soon as I did that, it started pouring out really good. So what we're going to try now is I'm going to crank it over a little bit and see if this guy will start up on me so I don't have to crack the injection lines because I'm really tired. I just want to get this thing started, check the fluids, and go to bed. injector lines because it's not running just right.